gone fishing instead of just a wishing. That music means only one thing to millions of people. Harold Ensley, the sportsman's friend, is on TV. Thank you, Don Warnick. Hi again, everybody. Nice to be with you. Come to think about it, when has Harold Ensley not been on TV? You'd have to go back a long, long time, half a century back. That's almost unheard of. That's legendary. Don't have a Harold Ensley rod. And if Harold Ensley is a legend, he's a modest one. I'm pretty fancy, you know that? On a hot June day, Harold meets us at a farm pond near Warrensburg, arriving in his trademark Ford station wagon. He's brought some fishing buddies with him. He wants to scout the location out because he might want to film one of his shows here. So here he is, casting away, just like he has on TV since the 1950s. Still making it look easy. Still making it look fun. And still coming across as a friend. Look at the wild roses out there, would you? I'm a sucker for flowers. So how did Harold Ensley get to be the sportsman's friend? It took a heck of a lot more than luck. Harold got his start in radio, hosting a fishing show in Joplin. Later, he moved to Kansas City, landing a sales job at a station in Independence, where he asked the program director if he could start up a similar fishing show. He said, uh, if you're good for nothing, you can, you can have it. And so uh, that's where I got my start. And I did it for nothing from May until September, and I sold the Sears to shell shotguns. Uh, and they signed a contract for four weeks, kept it for 15 years. At his wife's encouragement, Harold brought his show to television, doing it all live, including commercials. You had to be on your toes, you know, and, but I never was nervous. I never was nervous about it, and I never was apprehensive about it. And from then, it just snowballed. Boy, did it. On top of achieving local success, big-time celebrities soon sought out Harold. Stars like Jimmy Stewart, Carl Malden, Mickey Mantle, and George Brett, to name some. They all wanted to fish in person with Harold Ensley. Interviewed a lot of people from, from all, all, all walks of life, uh, movie stars, baseball players, and, and uh, athletes of all, all kinds. And you may not know that Harold went a little Hollywood himself, appearing in episodes of the Beverly Hillbillies and Gunsmoke. He still remembers his lines on Gunsmoke, playing a waiter in a saloon and trying to get a laugh out of the actor who played Festus. I said, you want some coffee? He said, yes, about a gallon. I said, what are you going to do with it? Take a bath in it? <laughs> well, it stumped him. And the, the, the director said, cut, cut, we want you guys ad libbing out there. They Yet as memorable as those celebrity moments are, Harold will tell you he enjoys his everyday people encounters just as much, whether it's interviewing a guy who's just landed a 10-pound bass. And before I go on the show, I interview him about what happened. Then he's so self-conscious about what he said in that interview that it didn't make a good interview. So I, I would just say, did you catch this fish? He'd say, yeah, that's all right. I'll tell me about it or giving a quick refresher course to someone who hasn't picked up a pole in years. Throw it high, see how high you can throw it. Oh, did you see how far she threw that? Come on, fish, get on that. Uh, too many people have lost sight of the fun of fishing, I think. They've, uh, they, uh, they've lost sight of the relaxation that comes from fishing and the challenge of fishing more or less the old-fashioned way. Teaching kids the fun of fishing is a thrill in itself for Harold. Bring it back a little bit like that. That's why he and his friend Jim help out every summer with a dare program that gives city kids a chance to fish. Now hang that onto the line. A little rain won't spoil the fun. How about that, huh? To have a legend like him grace our camp is more than we could have ever asked for. There. Uh, and he's been outstanding with the kids. He was very nice and 
he, he told us, he, he was sharing a lot of experience with us about him fishing and stuff. We got anybody that hasn't caught a fish? If there's one kid that hasn't caught a fish, he'll take that kid off to the side and work with him until he catches a fish. And that's dedication. That dedication has kept the sportsman's friend on the air all these years. In fact, it's shown on at least 60 stations across the country, including the station that launched it. You can tell that he wants people to have a good time. He wants you to catch the fish. He's not out there to show you how great he is. Uh, I've been fishing with him, and he's that way when you're with him in a boat, too. Miss that sucker. Come right across there. And I think that communicating that way, it makes it an enjoyable program to watch. If you enjoy the outdoors and fishing, it's fun to watch, and you can identify with Harold. And that's what uh, that's the key to communicating in television or in person. Now, these have already been bred, so we'll put them in and let them be cooking. Many of the stations that air the sportsman's friend might have fancy high-tech cameras, sound this. equipment, and production. Now, but Harold's show fish, has done just fine without it. In fact, Harold still shoots his own pictures using well, film in this 30-year-old camera. And it's made a living for me all these years, for one thing. And the other thing is, when I need a good picture, I can, I can do it. I've got all the sound, too. But I got them on, ta on uh, tape, the sound of every show I, I did. And at home, Harold still uses this projector so he can see what his film looks like. I remember when I shot that just like it was yesterday. But we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun out there facing him. And the, the guys are real patient with me. I yell at everybody when I'm taking a picture. I tell them I want the, want the boat this way, I want it that way. Believe it or not, it's the original projector used for his very first show and every show since. And would you believe I still use that projector after 45, 46 years and it's just as good as it was the day I got it. It may be easy for us to see why Harold is still on top, but did he ever dream the show would still be going strong today? No, I, I, I give it no thought. In fact, the, the manager of the station, when I agreed on the contract with him, he said, do you think he can last a year? And I said, well, I don't know whether I can last a year or not. Back in the 50s, Harold told the station manager there's a world of material out there. Enough, it turned out, to take viewers on adventure after adventure, whether it be on a Missouri farm pond. I ought to get you a fish. Of course, I like to fish in Missouri. I would have no idea how many TV shows I've done in Missouri in 46 years. I'm, I'm sure I would average over three a year in, in Missouri. It's 150, 30 minute shows. Or traveling throughout four continents around the world. If the Lord had said, just going to give me 24 hours to live, then I'm going to shut you down. I'd, and, but he said, in that 24 hours, I'll fly you any horse in the world. I'd say, fly me down to Costa Rica for 24 hours and let me face them. Whatever you want to do, that's all. Why not? On top of being absolutely beautiful, it's the place where Harold's daughter, Sandy, caught a 117-pound tarpon. There she is, and she's crying, but I'm, I'm not going to get a close-up of her. Was she ever thrilled? She wasn't thrilled any more than I was. Fishing in Africa is another special memory for Harold. We're going along in a homemade boat, and about a 25-horse motor, and we're going along, and I'm just saying to myself, how wonderful that God let me come here to Africa and, and see all, all of the things that I've been seeing. There are plenty more memories that mean a lot to Harold. One of the biggest is winning the World Series of Fishing Trophy and being inducted into the National Fishing Hall of Fame. Add all this up, and you've got a man who seems a bit bigger than life, although Harold may see it otherwise. I tell you, it's kind of like my friend Jim Hagen said. He said, the Lord takes care of those who take care of themselves. And I think that's, uh, uh, that's probably right. Yeah. It certainly wasn't any brilliance on my part, any smart on my part, it just, it just happened. I'm not rich in the stand, standpoint of financially rich, I'm rich because I've been blessed with a lot of friends. He usually raises the squash and I raise the cucumbers. Okay. And, and I have a comfortable home and I have a nice garden and, and have lots of friends and I have enough to eat and I can 
do about what I, what I want to, but I still live comfortably, and that's, that's about all you can ask, you know. The, the Lord would say, hey fella, you've had enough. And I'd say, boss, you've been good to me, I'm, I'm here to go. And that, that's the way I feel about it.